my lecture today is called Buddhism and Straight Out of Compton. How many of you saw the number one movie in America called Straight Out of Compton? I heard you've been spending a lot of time at your auntie house. How's the couch life? Got yeah, my woman and my baby living there. It's hard, man. But you know, everybody can't do what you do. Really, what I do getting played out, Dre. Where the money at? Why you gotta be so ruthless, cuz? I'm gonna make a few changes. African Americans got out in droves, and they're filling the theaters up because we want to see a movie that's inclusive. We want to see a movie that tells our story. We want to see a movie that is not biased, that is not racist. Like one example, uh, this time last year, the movie called Get On Up was about James Brown. And white people made that movie, even though we appreciate the movie about James Brown, but they really distorted the historical legacy of James Brown. They don't tell James Brown in a way of which we African Americans know, love, and understand James Brown, but they bring the negative things and purposely destroy the character of a person just like they're destroying the history and the culture of a Bill Cosby. Now, please understand that we teach Buddhism from the standpoint of inclusion. The SGI, Nichiren Shoshu and Nichiren Shu, the Japanese Buddhist sects who are most prominent and dominant in America where African Americans are involved, these organizations practice a Mahayana Buddhism that extricate all of the black history from Buddhism and they teach a distorted version of Buddhism. Now, the ultimate Buddhist teachings is the Lotus Sutra. About 600 years prior to the Christian era, the Buddhism of Sakyamuni emerged on planet Earth. And let me give you some facts about Buddhism. The people in India come from what is known as the Indus Valley Civilization. This is one of the great civilizations of mankind. The absolute most important thing to know about the Indus Valley Civilization is the fact that humans, who we call white people, never emerged or dominated or have any history in the Indus Valley Civilization. This civilization was called the Harappan Civilization. Please understand that race is a social construct. There is no scientific or biological evidence of race. Genetic science teaches us that all human evolution comes from a single black mother in Africa. People who call themselves the white race are the same people who are of the black race. Science teaches us that race is a social construct and race or the racism started in India around 100 AD. It was in India where humans designed the social construct called Varna or color. It was in India where humans first separated people based on skin color. In India they created the caste system whereas white was on the top and black was on the bottom. The white people on the top revised world history and created a social construct that we call racism. While race is a social construct, we have one group of people dominated another group based only on culture, language, and history. Now, let us get to the Buddhist lecture, Buddhism and the movie Straight Out of Compton. Let me explain to you the ultimate Buddhist teachings is the Lotus Sutra preached by Shakyamuni Buddha in India. We at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association follow the teachings of the great sage Nichiren Shonen who lived in 
19th century Japan. We consider Nichiren Shonen the messenger of the Buddha. Nichiren Shonen cleared up all of the confusion in Buddhism and he taught that the essence of the Buddhist teachings was in the Lotus Sutra and the essence of the Buddhist teachings was in the title. The title of the Lotus Sutra was translated from the black language called Parskit into Chinese and its title is Myo Ho Rin Ge Kyo. In simple terms, Myo Ho Rin Ge Kyo is translated as Mystic Law of Cause and Effect Teachings. Nitrin Shonen added the Parskit word which was called Namu or Namos which means devotion. We in Buddhism chant the words Namu now, as we go into that, please, so that we can get a clear understanding of Buddhism from a black perspective, we who practice Nichiren Buddhism chant Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Let me be clear. Rap music is chanting. Chanting should not be anything new to black people. When you listen to rap music, you are chanting. The white racist establishment has a problem with rap music. When you chant or rap, the words affect you. In Buddhism, you heard the word karma. Karma is only means cause and effect. The way that karma is created is by four things. Words, thoughts, actions, and deeds. Now, let us get into Buddhist teachings. The Gosho, or writings of Nichiren Shonen, teaches us. Now, that in the second chapter of the Lotus Sutra, it reads, quote, only Buddhas know the true aspect of all phenomena. That is, appearance, nature, entity, power, influence, inherent cause, relationship, latent effect, manifest effect, and the consistency from the beginning to the end. In plain and simple terms, we explain the movie straight out of Compton from the understanding of the law of cause and effect. A Buddha is one who looks at phenomena from the beginning to the end. Now, those of you who watch the movie, you just see a movie who, under, we who understand Buddhism or the law of cause and effect, go all the way to India in the caste system and explain this movie came about in relationship to the law of cause and effect. Racism started in India. The beginning of the social contract construct. Now, there is a name that I cannot really pronounce that you must understand when looking at the movie straight out of Compton because we who are of the proud black Buddhist world association, we teach you the law of cause and effect and we go off into history. We go off into archaeology, archaeology. we go off into anthropology, we go off into history and culture. Now, to get an understanding of rap music and to understand the full history of rap music, we follow the law of cause and effect. Now there's a name called Kio Rock for C, William Kigo C. Lee, also known as Bra Willie, was born September 19, 1938. This brother came to America from South Africa. He was a political activist and an influential member of the African National Conference. In the 1960s and 70s, he was inaugurated as Africa's National Port 
laureate. Now, it was Keo Rob Fusse, William Kigo Silly, or Bra Willie, who actually was the man that influenced America to start rap music because a rap music has an African root. Rap music is only a 21st century version of the African drum because communication in Africa was with the African drum. They can communicate with the drum and communicate in rhythm and rap music is only a 21st century version of the African drum. And Kiro say William K. Garcilli, he was the guy who influenced some brothers in New York. They were called the last poets. Now it was the last poets who are recorded as the first rappers in America. I want you to understand. The last poets recorded an album in 1970. In fact, when I was in high school at Hamilton High School in Memphis, I used to listen to the rap music of the last poets. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to play a little bit of it for you so you can kind of understand that this is the first rap song. Now, the song we're going to get into it's called Niggas Are Afraid of Revolution. We're going to get a little bars of it to it to you. Then we're going to get back into it. We just want to show you that rap music started actually in New York. And the first people to do it were the last ports and they lived in New York. Let's show you a little bit about the song. Niggas. Niggas are scared of revolution. But niggas shouldn't be scared of revolution Because revolution is nothing but change And all niggas do is change Niggas come in for murder and change into flipping clothes They the streets to make some quick change Niggas change their hair from black to red to blonde And old black hair that looks will change Niggas kill other niggas Just because one didn't receive the correct change Niggas change from men to women From women to men Niggas change, change, change You hear niggas say Things are changing 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 in my high school yearbook, I don't have a picture of it, I own a high school yearbook, but one of the guys that was in the last ports, his name was Obil Don Oyewo. What I did was I adopted an African name, and my nickname would be Obil Don Oyewo. In fact, about a year ago, I had a chance to speak with Obil Don Oyewo, who lives in New York. So we go very deep in the history and the culture of rap music. We also are the first to actually make rap music inclusive of the Buddhist teachings. See, the way Buddhism is taught, the Japanese, they don't include no rap music. They don't include no black culture. They're not going to teach you Buddhism in a way that you can understand. No Japanese teacher or no Japanese can t really teach black people Buddhism. All they teach is Japanese culture. In regards to Buddhism, Japanese are successful in getting black Buddhists to act like Japanese. But can you come around and act like Japanese? In WA. Now, this past Sunday, I was at the movie theater behind, uh, and behind me was a group, a lady, and 19 people, little children from retired people, that 19 people were all enthusiastic, and they were coming to see the movie straight out of Compton. It was a big thing. Why is it that this is the number one movie in America that's into superhero figures? Because black people desire so much to see our story, 
They want to see a story that represents us in a true form. And this is one of the rare occasions where you can get unadulterated culture. You can get the history told in a way that's inclusive, told unadulterated, unmixed with they tell a story. Now, a lot of people are saying that the story is revisionist history because they didn't tell every single thing. For example, Dr. Dre was a pretty tough dude. And Dr. Dre would kick ass and take names, and he had some incidents with a woman. And many men, like Bill Cosby or whoever, have had challenges early in their lives. And Dr. Dre came out and made an apology for the women who he had abused. Now, as young men, they call women bitches and hoes and they did things, but as men mature, they realize that they have a social responsibility to make a way and cut a path for our youth, for the next generation. They have a responsibility to help make this world a better world. And what they did with this movie, straight out of Compton, is that they told a story. They told a message of hope. They were the voice, and they is a voice for the African-American community. The movie was very hard for me to watch because I see a young man that's struggling with a baby that has aspirations of going on to be success in the music business, but yet he has all these challenges. He has the challenges that the brothers face in Compton that from his world, it is a challenge out there. While they were making the movie, you had the thing that happened in Ferguson, Missouri. You had the guy that get killed, Eric Garner, in New York. You had the Trayvon Martin shooting. You had police that's killing black people. See, these brothers come out of a culture where they disrespected where a person get arrested for while driving black. The world for black people and the America for white people is two different worlds because we live in a world of social inequality where you got a bunch of people concentrated in one single group. People don't have education. People don't have things. And if you're lucky, you get out. Otherwise, you can be dead. It's not a matter if you're going to get arrested or if somebody's going to get killed. It's a matter of when because there is a social construct to put these people in jail. When Ronald Reagan got in office, Ronald Reagan came up with a plan called War on Drugs. War on Drugs is a code name for a war on niggas. That what they did was they gave life sentences to put all niggas or put African Americans or black people in the jails to take their rights away. They created in America the new 21st century caste system that when a man goes to jail, they got people in jail that's doing life sentences not for hurting anybody but because they're trying to sell drugs to survive. Now, we're not saying that it's right, but people should not have to serve a life sentence for no, uh, no marijuana, whereas at the same time, young boys and, and that go to school to, to, uh, to the colleges in L.A., they're not arresting no white people, getting no white people no life sentences for no marijuana or nonviolent crimes, but yet they take black people and put them in jail. So what the movie, Straight out of Compton, represents the movie Straight Outta Compton represents a voice. It is a voice of young people who wanted to express themselves. We didn't say they were perfect. In their 19, what is it, 88 album, Straight Outta Compton, they said we are not the role models. We are just regular people who want to live the American dream and express ourselves, express our art. And what they did was, these young men made it. 
Now, I'm not sure where this move would stand in regards to classic or well-made black movies. Just like a Spike Lee movie, this movie was very hard on me. Many of, of the Spike Lee movies are very painful to watch. Although I know the end of the movie, I'm not sure if I can watch the movie again. This is just not just a movie. This movie is a story that is happening in my personal life in 2015 right now. The things that they show in the movie, the police brutality, the challenges that we face. We face these things right now. This movie, you know, there's a scene in the movie where the Jewish white man asks, what does the name NWA stand for? And he replied, niggas with an attitude. Now, NWA is niggas with an attitude. I was as a youth, I wasn't keeping up with NSA, or NWA rather, and but I know one thing, when they are niggas with an attitude, we at the Proud Black Buddhist World Association, we are niggas with an attitude. A nigga with an attitude is a nigga that's not going to sit back and let no Japanese educate all the black kids out of Buddhism. We're not going to be the kind of guy that's going to lick up the ass of Daisaki Keita and sing some song talking about some sensei and I'm crying because some guy says he's the high priest and all of a sudden he's been all knowing. I don't live like that. I'm not going to put no Jose Toda or some Sunnis of Rare Makaguchi over no Dr. Maul or the King, who, who's Dr. Maul or the King. I know that these Japanese ain't did nothing for me, but yet I come to some SGI meeting and they got you crying over some Sunnis of Rare Makaguchi who ain't did nothing, or Jose Toda who didn't do nothing but tell you to practice Sanskrit, which they helped to extricate the black history out of Buddhism, and I'm supposed to kiss his ass? Hell no. When I look at Nichiren Shoshu Buddhism, they only have Japanese priests, no women priests, and they tell me something about true Buddhism, they can kiss my ass. The African American Nichiren Shoshu priest, Mukai Shonen, who lives in Houston, Texas, objected to our suggestion that we call ourselves the Memphis Proud Black Buddhists. This black woman had a problem with black people calling themselves Proud Black Buddhists. There's nothing wrong with being proud, black, and Buddhist. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing racist about that. I'm a proud black Buddhist. I'm proud in that I want my culture inclusive of Buddhism. In the movie, members of the group departed and they split apart. Then they dissed each other with rap songs going back and forward. The move was brilliant because in real time, each group challenged each other with rap music and songs. And some of the words were like brilliant, brilliantly put together. Today you have West Coast rappers challenging East Coast rappers. The minds and brilliance as to how these men can execute the spoken word is phenomenal. These men are masters of the word. You can go anywhere in Ghetto USA and you can find youth, even 10 years old, who can dance and who can rap. They could rap the Constitution if you put it in music form. There is one thing that the movie Straight Outta Compton teaches. They teach something that many Hollywood movies purposefully do. Many Hollywood movies purposely destroy the character of black people. One example is the 2014 movie Get On Up about James Brown. The writers perfectly destroyed the character and the greatness of James Brown. They had to believe that James Brown was a crazy lunatic and he was one of the greatest men in history, but they showed the negative side where James Brown decided to go out of jail and then plead guilty to doing a crime 
that he didn't do. Critics of the movie Straight Outta Compton said that the movie was revisionist history. White history is revisionist history that removes black history and culture. In the movie, these young men came back together. This is a good thing because they showed a part of the story. In the movie, there were young men. They did things they were not proud of. Dr. Dre now, billionaire, apologized for the mistreatment of women. Yes, they called women bitches, hoes, and did many things they're not proud of today when men are now fathers and they have daughters. But what they did was they did this movie to tell a story. They did this movie to tell that story that you can make it, to give hope, to give inspiration, to give a voice. The movie Straight Outta Compton is a story of cultural inclusion and fighting cultural inequality. In the promotional trailer, they say, quote, Our art is a reflection of right. our reality. Our art is a reflection of our reality. Please understand that the yes, point be of the movie artists. is Rap about is an cultural you cannot come down here equality. And it is said that our art is a reflection of our reality. They are saying we black people tell our own story through our own culture and not via the prism of white people. NWA wanted cultural expression. In Buddhism, there are the ten worlds. Hell, hunger, animality, anchor, humanity, heaven, learning, self-realization, bodhisattva, and Buddhahood. In their music, the men express the lower worlds. The gangster life is the lower six worlds. In their life, they were able to escape the lower six worlds. In Buddhism, we chant Namu Myoho Renge Kyo to a scroll of what is called the treasure tower. Now, right here is a scroll. That's what we call the scroll of the treasure tower. In the ghost show or writings of Nitron called the treasure tower, it reads, the treasure tower is adorned with the seven kinds of treasures. In Buddhism, it is a teaching that teaches you the seven kinds of treasures. That is, number one, hearing the correct teachings. Number two, believing the correct teachings. Number three, keeping the precepts. Number four, engaging in meditation. That's chanting. Number five, practicing assiduously. That's doing our gongyo and our practice. Then number six, renouncing attachments. And number seven, reflecting on oneself, looking at ourselves and making ourselves better. Now, the practice of Buddhism is the practice of developing one's pure self. We as humans evolve and practice to be better citizens. The movie Straight Outta Compton, Dr. Dre and Ice Cube put their hearts and soul into telling a story that can benefit others. What they say or their message they told was their art is a reflection of their reality. In Buddhism, Buddhism is a religion of reason that is not known in the black community and its base is because it is not reflected in the reality of the black community. They have the Japanese and white culture dominating Buddhism. Just as you have NWA, niggas with an attitude, you got Anthony L. Elmore president and founder of the Proud Black Buddhists who express or teach Buddhism via our black culture. We are the NWA of Buddhism. And I will go out from my lecture in Buddhism and with a song. Don't die, Mother Hubbards. They don't forget Mother 
Hubbards, they don't think my cousin don't die. I'm on the Hubbards, they don't think my cousin don't die. I'm on the Hubbards, they don't think my cousin don't die. I'm on the Hubbards, they don't think my cousin don't die. I'm on the Hubbards, they don't think my cousin don't die. Buddhism is a religion that must be quite a key. The Japanese tracks of Buddhism are a spirit or a key. Black people in the Buddhist set call the SCI. Them black people are black traitors. They deny black history and worship a Japanese called Daisaki Kena. I'm the one that said the Kena's wrong. The Buddha was no Aryan. Daisaki Kena don't teach no true Buddhism. He teaches Japanese nationalism. Black Buddhists need to see the movie called Selma. Perhaps these blacks can get a sense of black pride. They need to see how those who fought for equality laid down their lives and died. It does not matter what color you be. True Buddhism is about human equality. Let me tell you a true respect fact. There's nothing wrong with being proud Buddhist in life. Only racist in Uncle Tom's object to the proud black Buddhist sect. Them suckers and niches show you teach that only a Japanese can be a priest. Good whites in the movie Selma did not object to the color that black folk be. They objected to inequality. The black female priests in Nitchin Shoe objected to me calling ourselves black. When it comes to Nitchin Shoe meeting, she said, Don't come Don't back. They told me a black singer is where I'm coming from. At Nitchin Shoe meetings, you are no longer welcome. It does not matter what color the Buddhist said be. True Buddhism is about equality. Them time, Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Them time, Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts. Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, they don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts of them time. Mother Hubbard, don't remember the cuts of them time. Black people, the Buddha said, called the SCI. Them black people are black traitors. They deny black history and worship a Japanese called Daisaki Kena. Daisaki Kena don't teach no true Buddhism. He teaches Japanese nationalism. Them China mother hovers don't pay the cuts. Them China mother brothers don't pay the brothers. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them China need to see how those they don't pay the cuts. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them China mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Them mother hovers they don't pay the cuts. Shoot me, you are no longer aware of the time, Mother Hubbard. They're not 
Forward. Let's don't look forward. backwards. Forward. See things through. 